about to get ready to talk about some things that a lot of black people don't like to particularly uh, talk about. Yes, indeedy, man. The wills, power of attorneys, health care, power of attorneys. And so if you have any questions, man, we got the phone lines open right now. 866-9-RICKY, our money expert, Janai Thornton. Welcome back to the show, Janai. Y'all give it up. <laughs> Janai, Janai, you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, indeedy, man. Welcome to the show, man. So most people think a will is important, obviously, but why is it important to have a power of attorney and health care power of attorney as well? Well, you know, what's interesting is, of course, a will is important because it's going to tell people what to do when we pass away. But the power of attorney and the health care power of attorney, that means we're, we're still alive, but we're, we're just sick. We're disabled, and we can't handle our own business and affairs. So the health care power of attorney, it's gonna, you're going to pick the people who are going to be in charge to make medical decisions on your behalf. And that power of attorney means, again, if you're too sick to take care of your own business, pay your own bills, whatever business you have, you're going to pick the people who are going to do that for you until you get better. Right. Well, Jenna, who needs a will? Well, you know, Brad, you know, that's what's interesting. People think it's only for rich people. A will is for anybody. (laughs) Or old people. Right, right, right. But a will is really important for anybody who wants order after they pass away. So you want to be able to pick who's going to be in charge, who's going to wind up your affairs, like your executor. If you have dependents, you want to be able to decide who is going to take care of your dependents when you pass away. And then, of course, it's the assets and the money. So if you have, you don't have to have a lot of money. If you have a retirement account, a bank account, you own real estate, you need to make those decisions because if you don't, the court is going to make those decisions for you. Mm -hmm. So, Janai, now I need some help with this. It's a very touchy, touchy subject. So what right. advice do you have for people who want to have this discussion with their parents or grandparents that might be aging um, regarding their will and last wishes? Like, if they don't have one, how do you have that very uncomfortable conversation with your elders? You know, it's interesting about that, too, is we only want to focus on our elders and not our siblings and our nieces and nephews and our cousins, other people who are in our age group, too. You want to have this greater discussion with anybody in your life. If they pass away or if you pass away, you are going to have some involvement or vice versa. So what I suggest that people do is um, share what plans you've already made or how you're working on your own stuff. Um, decide who needs to participate in the conversation. Maybe it's not just you, and then maybe you need to be tag-teaming with another relative or family friend. Um, and you want to reassure people that this just isn't about the money, but this is really about love. Having a will, um, having your power of attorney and health care power of attorney, it's actually an act of love because it gives so much order. So I would take that, I would take that strategy with my family and friends. Hey, Janai. So... I'm imagining that this uh, would vary from state to state, but generally speaking, what happens when somebody dies and does not have a will? Um, It does vary a little bit from state to state, but what happens is the court will come in and decide who is going to get what, and they typically are going to do that by relationship. So they'll say, you know, is it parents first? Um, children, siblings, they literally have an order. So regardless of your family situation, your family history, the judge is going to make that decision. And they are also going to use those same rules to apply to your dependents as well. Like they say, we want to keep those folks out of our business, and we want to make the decisions and take care of this ourselves. The other thing, too, we have to remember, this impacts the transference of wealth. So you don't have to have millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. But if you own a house, you want to make sure it gets transferred to the right person. So we got to get these documents in place. Yeah, that's a good point, Janai, because I asked my homie from the hood if he had a will. He said, yeah, I got a cousin, Willie. (laughs) (laughs) Wrong will. (laughs) Never mind. I'll be here all week. (laughs) All right, we got some calls, Janai. (laughs) <laughs> Ricky Smiley Morning Show, you are, let him live. you are on with money expert Janai Thornton. Good morning. I have a brother that is incarcerated, and he has suffered a stroke while uh, being incarcerated. And I was wondering what steps do I need to take to get power of attorney over his affairs? Well, you know, for that, you're going to have to go through his attorney to find out what you can do so you can get um, so you 
can be the one who's put in charge. So, yeah, definitely contact his attorney to make sure that you can get those documents executed. Ricky Smiley Morning Show, you are on with money expert Janai Thornton. Good morning. Okay, great. Hi, uh, my name is Ann. My mother, who is 79 years old, have two policies, and she puts her nickname on her policy instead of her correct name. Could I get a notarized letter or something to prove it or, or the insurance to do the papers? You know, that's my question. Will it be legal for her to have a nickname on a policy and it still pay out? Hey, good morning, and yes, I would get that notarized letter, but before I did that, I would contact the insurance company because what I know for sure, this is not the first time this has happened. They may have a standard form that needs to be completed. So you want to find out what the insurance company's rules are first and follow those to the letter so you can get that policy updated. Janai Thornton, we appreciate your time as always. For everyone that did not get in, how can they contact you? Um, of course, you can always follow me at Janai Thornton. That's J-I-N-I-T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N. And please join my free female money community at thankmelater.money. And thank you, guys. Please get y'all's documents done, too, if you haven't done it already. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Y'all give it up for money expert Janai Thornton. <laughs>